Hey millionaire, no matter how much money you've made, it's still possible to go broke. And nobody seems more skilled at going broke than sports stars. Even the highest paid sportsmen blow all their money in dumb and sometimes very creative ways. It doesn't take long before they're filing for bankruptcy. If you think NBA stars are immune, you are so wrong. In fact, according to a 2009 report in Sports Illustrated, 60% of NBA players go bankrupt within just five years of retiring. There's so many NBA players who went broke that we could never fit them all in one list. So we've rounded up our own top eight. Hearing just how much money these NBA players lost will blow your mind. So let's get to it. Number eight, Eddie Curry, $57 million. While Eddie Curry was never one of the biggest stars, he sure was valuable on the court. Sadly, his life never quite turned out the way he would have hoped. Back in 2009, his life suddenly went down a really dark path. It started when his former chauffeur suddenly accused Curry of owing him $93,000 in unpaid wages. But that wasn't the worst part. He topped off the claim with an allegation of sexual harassment. Curry denied the claims, and since the chauffeur was a convicted felon, it's possible some of his claims were lies. As soon as Curry had settled that problem, he was given the news that was way worse. His nine-month-old daughter and her mom, Curry's ex-girlfriend Nova, were found dead in Nova's apartment. This was no tragic accident either. They had been murdered by Nova's attorney, who represented her in the custody case against Curry. Thankfully, his three-year-old son was found at the scene unharmed, but that doesn't change how devastated he must have been over the death of his baby daughter. The lawyer was later charged with first-degree murder. To add to his troubles, in 2010, it was revealed that he was totally broke. Despite making $57 million throughout his career, he was $2 million in debt when he filed for bankruptcy. I only hope he can get back on his feet. Number 7. Kenny Anderson, $63 million Some people still think Kenny Anderson may have been the greatest New York prep player of all time. That's an impressive feat, considering all the great New York players, and his bank balance grew to an equally impressive $63 million. But remarkably, Anderson somehow managed to go broke within just weeks of retiring. It seems a couple of failed marriages broke Anderson's bank. One of his ex-wives even made an appearance on VH1's Basketball Wives to show off how much money she got in a divorce settlement. Her vehicle license plate even reads, his cash, just so everyone knows she took all Anderson's money. That's gotta hurt. To add insult to injury, Anderson was trying to get back on his feet by coaching high schoolers, but he lost his job due to a DUI. Luckily, since 2013, things seem to be looking up for Anderson. There's even an award-winning feature-length documentary about him called Mr. Chips, in case you want to learn more about his struggles. Number 6. Jason Williams, $63 million Jason Williams had a pretty unique career. He made his only All-Star game at the age of 30 and retired due to injury at the age of 31. Still, he somehow managed to make $63 million. Everyone expected him to become the next great analyst, but a tragedy ended his career. In 2002, he was playing with his gun while riding around in his limo when the gun accidentally went off. The fatal mistake killed William's driver. William served a 27-month prison sentence as a result. That wasn't how he went broke, though. Despite the accident and a string of other arrests for drugs and alcohol-related problems, Williams was known for his generosity. He was even known to regularly give $500 tips, but it all added up. In the 2010 court case, it was revealed that Williams was narrowly avoiding bankruptcy and practically broke. The story does have a happy ending, though, because Williams now runs the Rebound Institute, a recovery center in Florida. How would you turn your life around if you went broke? Let us know in the comments. Number 5. Derek Coleman, $91 million Derek Coleman was set to become the world's best power forward ever, but sadly, he somehow wasted his talent, and he was accused of playing just well enough to ensure he wasn't dropped instead of playing at his best. Still, he did earn an impressive $91 million throughout his career, even if he never became the star he could have been. But it seems he wasn't any more interested in keeping track of his money. In 2010, he had to file for bankruptcy, but in a weird way, that might have been a good thing. After losing his millions, he set up DC Elite in his hometown, Detroit, to bring the love of basketball to inner city kids. At least something good came from going broke. Number 4. Vin Baker, $97 million Vin Baker wasn't just a four-time all-star. 
He was also an Olympic gold medalist by the time he retired. That's a level of stardom most people never dream of, but it does mean that this story is pretty shocking. Despite earning $97 million in his star-studded career, Vin was seen working at a Starbucks to survive. A battle with alcoholism and other financial troubles meant Vin quickly burned through all his money. It's almost lucky that he happened to be friends with the CEO of Starbucks, Howard Schultz. He bailed him out by offering him a managerial position at a Connecticut branch near his home. You'll be happy to hear that the job actually did help Baker get back on his feet. He started coaching high school basketball and has since worked his way up to assistant coach with his old team, the Milwaukee Bucks. Hopefully, it only gets better from there. Think $97 million is a lot to lose? Keep watching for the really big losses. Number 3. Latrell Sproul, $100 million Latrell Sproul was riding high for so long he must have forgotten that you can go broke. With about $100 million in the bank, he famously turned down a $21 million contract. That's more money than most people will ever have, but he didn't care. Within just two years of retirement, he'd blown through his $100 million. His 1.5 million 70-foot private yacht had been repossessed, and his house in Milwaukee and New York had been foreclosed. That must have been a pretty hard pill to swallow for someone who clearly thought they had enough money to last a lifetime. Apparently, he had just 50000 left in his bank account after that. Bet he regrets turning down that contract now. Number 2. Antoine Walker, $108 million Antoine Walker became a star really early in his career. He was a three-time All-Star and even won a ring with the Miami Heat. With all that star power, he earned an impressive $108 million over his career, and he lost it all within a year of retiring. He was quickly arrested for writing bad checks to pay off gambling debts he couldn't afford. Apparently, he owed six-figure sums to more than one casino. Hearing that, it makes sense that he couldn't pay. Two years after his arrest, he filed for bankruptcy. One of his old teammates was nice enough to pay for his bankruptcy attorney. But sadly, Walker still had to auction off his NCAA championship ring to cover his debts. As of 2013, he's debt-free, so at least there's a happy ending. Number 1. Allen Iverson – $154 million Allen Iverson is definitely a like him or hate him kind of player, but he sure made his mark. As an MVP and Hall of Famer, he's one of the sport's most iconic players. It's estimated that he made over $154 million during his career. That's a lot of money, even for an NBA star. There are conflicting reports about him blowing all that cash, but I think he deserves the top spot on this list. Let me explain. Iverson has made more than his fair share of conflict with the law. He's been arrested for possessing guns, and he's even been caught having physical fights with casino security. But it was in 2012 that things really got rough for him. He was taken to court by a jeweler. Apparently, Iverson owed him an incredible amount of money, $860,000. Iverson couldn't pay the debt, so the judge ruled to remove Iverson's control over his own bank account. Divorce proceedings complicated things even further. When his ex-wife won half of his $32 million trust fund that he gains access to in 2030, it's true that he had a lifetime contract with Reebok that earned him $800,000 per year. So you can say he didn't go broke. I say, if you can't access your bank account, you're broke no matter what you're earning. If you made $100 million, it'd probably save some and spend the rest. But not these idiots. These NBA players were filthy rich, but money can't fix stupid. And these have to be the absolute dumbest ways NBA players have ever gone broke. Number 1's personalized yacht is our favorite, but let us know yours in the comments below. Number 10. Glenn Rice Glenn Rice was one of the NBA's best three-point shooters in the 1990s, and after setting two all-star records of the most points scored in a quarter with 20 and the most points scored in a half with 24, he was crowned the NBA All-Star Game MVP in 1997. His 15-year career, which saw him play with Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal, earned him a fortune of $68 million. So how did he end up losing his hard-earned wealth? Upon retirement, Glenn lived off of his NBA assets and ventured into business, but he had poor business skills and lacked financial planning. He spent recklessly and made bad investments that failed woefully. These ate up much of his wealth. Also, Glenn had to pay child support for a child he fathered with Robin Duncan of Fort Lauderdale, a woman he had an affair with while still married to Christina Fernandez Rice. 
And after he lost most of his money to bad investments, he couldn't cope with the child support. He had to ask the judge to lower the child support payment from $1,500 to $600 to enable him to pay. A part of a heartbreaking letter written to the court stated, the father, Rice, is in dire financial straits. He has attempted to become gainfully employed to various capacities, but has been unable to earn a semblance of meaningful income. Robin and the court agreed to his plea, and the amount was reduced. It also came to light that Glenn's financial advisor, Brian J. Quarant, a former executive representing a management group belonging to Live Nation Entertainment, stole hundreds of thousands from him. To survive, Glenn had to sign lots of autographs and organize private basketball training sessions. Luckily, over the years, Glenn has made a comeback. He works as a scout and serves as an ambassador for the Miami Heat. If you were in Glenn's shoes, how would you have handled your finances? Tell us in the comment section and please like the video. Keep watching as we progress. Number 9. Dennis Rodman Dennis Rodman mesmerized us with his super performance during his career, which spanned between 1986 to 2000. Although he made over $43 million in his long career, his net worth now stands at 500 grand. While this might not necessarily be considered broke, it kind of is judging from the height he fell from. So how did this blazing basketball star lose his wealth? Well, misplaced trust. Dennis fell for a woman who deceived a lot of athletes claiming to be a financial advisor, when in reality she was a con woman. Boasting a fake degree from Harvard and success on Wall Street, Peggy Ann Fuller gained Dennis's trust and took charge of the player's account, after claiming his financial troubles came from his reckless spending. However, Dennis began to notice red flags when the electricity in the Florida house Fuller bought was cut off. Dennis's former assistant also alerted him that he was behind in his insurance and payments. Fullard was eventually sentenced to 10 years in prison in 2018 for interstate transportation of stolen property. Dennis was one of her victims. However, this doesn't mean Dennis is innocent of extravagant spending. The Los Angeles Times revealed that he owed $830,376 in child support as well as spousal support in 2012. He was also said to have spent huge sums of dollars on alcohol and strip clubs, although much of the source of the information came from Fullard, so it's quite difficult to tell what Dennis spent and what he lost in the scam. Known for his quirky behavior and series of misconducts, he was charged 200 grand for kicking a referee in the groin. His run-ins with the law cost him thousands of dollars, which included drunk driving and domestic disturbances. He was also once fined 20 grand for leaving his team to wrestle with Hulk Hogan during the NBA Finals playoffs in 1998. He was also charged 20 grand for quarreling with another referee, and when he skipped preseason camp in 1992, he was fined $68,000. All these drained his accounts and left him with a $500,000 net worth, a far cry from his glorious days. He later became a coach for the North Korean Basketball Association and still struggles with debt. If you were a millionaire, what measures would you take to fish out fake advisors? Tell us in the comment section and keep watching. Number 8. Darius Miles Darius Miles earned a whopping sum of 62 mil in his eight-year career cut short by a knee injury. One would think that he would be more cautious with his money, knowing that the injury had ended his career. But just six years after retirement, Darius declared bankruptcy. So what really happened? Raised by his bus driver mother, Darius grew up in East St. Louis, where guns, drugs, and danger were the order of the day. But he was able to escape his surroundings, and at just 18 was drafted into the NBA, and he signed a contract with the Los Angeles Clippers, earning $3 million per year. But his earnings, including endorsement deals from Nike, couldn't last him a lifetime as he had hoped. In his words, when you're young, you think the money is going to last forever. Darius blames his financial downfall on wrong investments. He said in an interview, Listen, it takes a long time to go broke on buying Ferraris. What makes you broke are shady business deals. They'll make your money disappear quick. 
Darius didn't give much detail about how bad business deals ruined his fortune, but he reportedly lost more than $100,000 in a 2008 real estate deal in California. Another real estate deal, which he did as part of an investment group involving Marshall Falk and rapper Nelly, went wrong in downtown St. Louis, resulting in multiple multi-million dollar lawsuits and a legal tussle with a local lender. According to Darius, losing his mother to cancer in 2013 plunged him into depression and worsened his money management. When he filed for bankruptcy protection, he listed 500 grand in assets and 1.57 million in total liability, including a $20,000 child support debt and a $282,041 debt he owed to the Internal Revenue Service. To be able to pay his debt after declaring bankruptcy in 2016, Darius was compelled to auction off lots of his belongings. Some of the auction included sports memorabilia, such as an autographed LeBron James jersey, which sold for $1,500, thousands of DVDs and video games, and also expensive firearms like an AR-556 were auctioned. Darius moved to Florida after bankruptcy, staying with his friend and former teammate Richardson. That's how he's doing all right. Number 7. Antoine Walker in his 16-year career, Antoine Walker earned an amazing $100 million playing for the Mavericks, Celtics, Hawks, Timberwolves, Heat, the NBA D-League Stampede, and Grizzlies before retiring in 2012. A whole lot of his $100 million fortune has been reduced to two hundred fifty dollars at a point. Much of his wealth was wasted on writing bad checks involving gambling debts to the tune of $1 million. DUI, and real estate investments that went wrong, costing him around 10 mil. Antoine also blamed his ex, Evelyn Lozada, for his financial losses, claiming he spent millions on her and her family. He had to sell his 2006 NBA championship ring, which he won with the Miami Heat. Also, a luxurious lifestyle ate deeply into his wealth, and he can be described as rudderless when it comes to managing his finances. His generous nature also brought him down as well, because he was constantly giving out money to friends and family. However, it's good to know that Antoine has since gotten himself out of debt and bounced back. He has teamed with Morgan Stanley Sports and Entertainment, assisting NBA rookies with advice so they don't make the same mistakes he did. Number 6. Robert Swift Robert Swift's decline was a sad thing to watch. From being a millionaire at 18 to a destitute addict at 27, how did it go down? Robert earned about 11 mil while in the league for five years and was let go in 2009 by the Oklahoma City Thunder after they relocated from Seattle. He then played for NBA G League's Bakersfield Jam and also played in Japan, but in 2011 his career was over. And during his career years, he spent his money on family and friends, who always sucked the daylight out of a willing soul paid child support for his girlfriend, and made bad decisions that phased out his money. The seven-foot-one center became a cautionary tale of the risk of NBA teams choosing players just out of high school. His financial woes were so much that he was evicted from his foreclosed house, which was ridden with bullet holes, live ammunition, dog feces, and maggots. In 2014, Robert was charged with possession of a sawed-off shotgun. One year later, he was arrested in an alleged home invasion robbery scam. He spent 28 days in jail after a plea bargain deal and was described as a heavily armed heroin addict by local prosecutors. In a 2016 interview with Sports Illustrated, Robert said, There are still moments where it's rough, thinking about everything that's happened, what I would have done different. Luckily, after his jail sentence in 2015, Robert sold off his gun collection and made a decisive effort to get his life back. He got clean from drugs in 2018 and made a professional basketball comeback, playing for a 5th division team in Spain. Please press the like button if you haven't done so as we continue. Number 5. Eric Williams Eric Williams made a total of 40 mil from his NBA career, a sum that's more than enough to last a lifetime, right? But clearly, Eric couldn't handle it. According to a document obtained by TMZ Sports in 2017, Eric was said to be broke and homeless. The paper read, Former NBA player Eric Williams, who spent 12 seasons in the league, says he is homeless and broke. 
Eric, who appeared in Basketball Wives, sent a letter to a Colorado court explaining why he would be unable to make an appearance for a child support hearing. In the letter, he noted that a court-ordered citation for me to appear was not delivered to my home address, as I have no home. In the document, he explained that his condition was so pathetic that he had no money for an airplane fare and would not be able to pay a lawyer. He further told the court through his letter that he was a volunteer for an undisclosed nonprofit organization and was in the process of rebuilding his life. The shocking revelation took everyone by surprise. A player who made $40 million had gone broke to the extent of being homeless. Eric had 24 grand unpaid child support hanging around his neck for the mother of his then 13-year-old son. Eric, who played for the Cavaliers, Nets, Celtics, Nuggets, Bobcats, Spurs, and Raptors, squandered his fortune on luxury, bad business investments, child support, and frivolous spending on family friends. Number 4. Bill Willoughby Bill Willoughby was the third player in NBA history to be drafted from high school straight to the pros. He was regarded as the best high school basketball player in the U.S., and his first team was the Atlanta Hawks. His career lasted for eight years, and in 1984, the 6'8 athlete retired. Then his financial woes began. Bill claimed he lost about $1 million to a financial advisor who mismanaged his money. He was in and out of problems, and in 2016, he was arrested for fighting with police. He was accused of possessing marijuana, aggravated assault, and resisting arrest. Talk about grace to grass. Number 3. Jason Caffey In his career days, Jason Caffey was a role player who was lucky enough to play under the guidance of Michael Jordan in the Chicago Bulls in the late 1990s. The power forward went ahead to win two NBA titles and played a total of eight years in the NBA, playing for the Bulls, the Warriors, and the Bucks. He earned a total of $34 million from his NBA contracts. Yes, you heard that right, 34 mil. So how did Caffey lose it all? Child support. We all know how draining child support can be, Caffey was no exception to the reality of it. His predicament was on a colossal level. He had fathered 10 children with 8 different women, and each of them was on his neck for child support. Month in, month out, he was paying heavy child support and made national headlines then. Slowly but certainly, his finances were going down. By the time his career ended in 2003, his fortunes had dwindled terribly. In fact, by this time, he was no longer meeting up with the task of child support. He was struggling to make ends meet because, indeed, the well of cash had dried up. It was in 2007 that it dawned on Caffey that he had actually lost most of his wealth due to his reckless romantic engagements. He had to make the ultimate decision. That same year, he filed for bankruptcy to protect himself from all the eight women, which will see an end to his child support payments. In his bankruptcy protection, he had listed 1.9 million in debts against 1.15 mil in assets, most of which were tied up to business ventures. However, a judge in Alabama rejected his bankruptcy case and paved the way for him to be sued for child support. Shortly after, he was arrested and spent a week in Tuscaloosa County Jail for failure to pay child support. Soon after his release, Fulton County Superior Court Judge Cynthia D. Wright ordered his arrest for failing to obey another court order that stated he paid more than 200 grand in child support, also covering legal fees to Lorenda Brown and her attorney. Luckily for Caffey, a judge later ruled in his favor, and even ordered Karen Russell, one of the women with whom he had a child, to pay him $57,470 for violating the rule that prohibited creditors from requesting debt collection when bankruptcy proceedings were ongoing. Eventually, he was able to put a stop to the child support payments and became free of the parasitic women. But then, they had already drained him. However, child support was not Caffey's only problem. He was also plagued with depression and anxiety. At one point in 2010, he was arrested on a third-degree domestic violence charge after he assaulted a 46-year-old woman and was later released on a $1,000 bail. To put the pieces of his life back together, Caffey now runs a string of daycare facilities and a sports bar where he makes $11,500 a month, all located in his hometown. 
He's returned to Alabama State University, where he had earlier dropped out in the 1990s to complete a degree in physical education. He hopes to graduate in 2024. Number 2. Chris Washburn The story of Chris Washburn is one of the saddest in NBA history. Drafted number 3 by the Golden State Warriors in 1986, the center appeared in only 72 games in less than two seasons before a failed drug test within three years fetched him a lifetime ban from the league. By then, he had played for the Golden State Warriors and the Hawks, amassing around 9 mil. On forcefully being retired, he spiraled into heavy drug addiction and was completely out of tune with anything happening around him. How drugs have ruined lots of athletes is mind-boggling. Soon after, Chris found himself homeless and feeding from trash cans, a total distortion of who he was meant to be. He bagged a 13-month prison sentence for drug charges and couldn't even get a starting position on his penitentiary basketball team. Thankfully, Chris was able to get clean and has stayed sober for more than 15 years. He became his ailing mother's caregiver in his hometown, Hickory, North Carolina. Number 1. Latrell Sprewell Latrell Sprewell was a four-time All-Star whose career of 13 years fetched him a handsome sum of 100 mil, but his erratic behavior cost him heavily when in the 1997-1998 season he attempted to choke coach PJ Carlissimo during a practice for telling him to put a little mustard on his passes. He was consequently banned for 68 games without pay. During this time, he was offered a three-year contract of 21 mil by the Timberwolves, but you know what? He turned it down, saying it wasn't sufficient money to feed his children. Not only did he stay on one-year suspension without pay, he lost a golden opportunity to recover from the coming losses. A highly controversial figure, Spree bought several luxury cars that many of us only see in dreams. A Rolls-Royce Phantom, a Maybach, a personalized Lamborghini, and a 70-foot yacht named Milwaukee's Beast. By February 2008, most of his $100 million amassed had long vanished. It was in 2008 that Citizens Bank filed a foreclosure suit on the $405,000 house in Milwaukee he bought in 1994, as reported by ESPN. It was also revealed in a document that Spree had an unpaid $300,000 in outstanding payments and was behind in paying his $2,593 per month mortgage from September 2007 to January 2008. His New York mansion, which he bought at 2.3 mil, was foreclosed by Deutsche Bank in 2015. It was later listed for sale in 2017 for a lower price of $1.5 million, according to the Journal News. Spree's yacht was seized by North Fork Bank and auctioned for 856 grand, much less than the 1.5 mil of its original worth. And failing to maintain the required insurance, Spree was owing $1.3 million on the vessel. As if his financial problems weren't already bad enough, the mother of his three children filed a $200 million lawsuit against him in early 2007. According to her, Spree had violated their long-term cohabitation deal and had treated her badly the previous month. <laughs> wow! How easy it is to burn millions! But Spree has been known to take his losses with hearty laughter and is now worth around 150 grand. Thank you for watching to the end and leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. NBA players are earning bigger salaries than ever before, but stats show that almost 65% of basketball players go broke. Both old legends and new stars are losing millions. So we've counted down the top 20 for you. You'll never believe how much cash was lost by the person in our number one spot. Number 20. Ray Williams, 2.5 million. Ray Williams might never have been an all-star, but he was a star in his own right during his nine years in the NBA during the 80s. He played with the Knicks and the Nets in that time. At certain points in his career, he was one of the best people to hand the ball to if the team needed a couple of points. He retired in 1987, but that was a pretty bad decision. His life fell apart almost straight away. He'd earn an incredible $2.5 million during his career, but he was so short on cash that he had to apply for his NBA pension much sooner than expected. He was given $200,000, but sadly, 
He lost it all when he invested it in a real estate opportunity that turned out to be a scam. He had pretty much nothing left. It was so bad, he was soon living in his car, which he parked outside a friend's house in Boston. But finally, he was given a chance. In 2011, the Boston Globe ran a story on how he was down on his luck, and some of his former teammates got in touch. Through them, he landed a job as a recreation specialist at Mount Vernon. His life got a little easier after that, but he sadly passed away in 2013. 2.5 million is a lot to lose, but it doesn't come close to the amount that the next person on our list had lost. Number 19, Sidney Moncrief, 7.2 million. Sidney Moncrief had a star-studded career, literally. In his 11 years with the NBA, he was a five-time All-Star. And if that wasn't good enough, he was also the very first Defensive Player of the Year award before winning it again the next year too, making him the only guard in the history of the game to win the award twice. During his NBA career and making his name with the Milwaukee Bucks, he earned $7.2 million, a very impressive salary in the 80s. He did try to grow his wealth after retiring. He bought a car dealership in Arkansas while working as an assistant for the Dallas Mavericks. But somehow, in 2005, he filed for bankruptcy. He owed tons of cash to car dealerships, a bank, a newspaper, and even the Mavericks. No, we don't know why. Lucky for him, he wasn't broke for too long. A job as analyst for Fox Sports and a coach of a G League team, Fort Worth Flyers, bailed him out of trouble. It's always impressive when someone goes broke but bounces back, so here's another one. Number 18, Rick Mahorn. 8.5 million. Rick Mahorn is best remembered as an essential part of the Detroit Pistons championship run. He was a pretty reliable player, so you would expect him to be just as reliable with money. And he kind of was. It did take him 10 years after retiring before he ran into financial trouble. But he finally filed for bankruptcy in 2009. Weirdly, that happened even though he had a job as a WNBA coach. So what happened? He defaulted on one of his mortgages and soon owed a whopping 200 grand. But, like we said, he's reliable and had soon got himself two more jobs. One as a broadcaster for his old team, and one coaching for Ice Cube's Big Three League. He was back on track financially in no time. Rick went totally broke before bouncing back, but you don't need to file for bankruptcy if you lose millions, as the next person on our list proves. Number 17, Eric Strickland, 13 million. Eric Strickland played for nine seasons, peaking during his time with the Dallas Mavericks. His career was short and sweet, and he retired at the age of just 32. But that didn't mean he sacrificed cash. He earned an impressive 13 million, but he wasn't immune for trusting the wrong person. One day, a friend approached Eric with a really great real estate deal. It was for the purchase of a piece of land, which Eric figured he could flip for a really good profit. He even got his dad to double check it for him, but everyone agreed it looked legit. And after all, it had come from a friend. So what can go wrong? A lot, it turns out. Eric soon realized that it wouldn't make him even half as much cash as he'd been told. Even worse, his so-called friend had made a huge profit off the bogus deal. We don't know exactly what Eric's finances look like now, but he's definitely nowhere near as rich as he could have been if that friend hadn't taken him for a ride. He's not the only player who lost a lot of cash because a friend lied to him. The next player on our list can join that club. Number 16, Randy Brown. 15.1 million. Randy Brown played with the Celtics, the Kings, the Suns, and most importantly, he had a three-ring winning run with the Chicago Bulls during his years with the NBA. From 1995 to 2000, he earned $15.16 million. It's pretty hard to lose that kind of cash, but Randy had become a statistic. In other words, he's part of the 60% of NBA players who go broke within five years of retiring. It's pretty unfortunate because he did try to be smart with his cash. He invested it into loads of real estate and even restaurant chains, often choosing what he'd invest in thanks to a friend's recommendation. Sadly, his friend should have never been trusted, and he was soon in serious financial trouble. Luckily for Randy, his old teammates stepped up to help. The Bulls offered him a job as director of player development and then later even promoted him to the assistant general manager. It wasn't long before he was back on steady ground. It's always nice when old friends come to the rescue. Sadly for the next player on our list, his team couldn't save him. Number 15, Dan Issel, 
18 million. Basketball Hall of Famer and seven-time All-Star Dan Issel spent his entire NBA career with the Denver Nuggets. It served him well, earning him an incredible 18 million and two post-retirement jobs as the head coach and an executive. But it was his other business that got him into financial trouble. In 2009, he was forced to file for bankruptcy as a result, owing an eye-watering $4.5 million to 35 different companies. Sadly, he auctioned off a lot of his personal possessions, from his time with the NBA and ABA, to raise enough money to pay them back. It had to hurt, because these things had a lot of sentimental values for him. But he did achieve his goal of paying back every cent he owed, which is pretty impressive. Dan got himself back on track, but the next person on our list wasn't able to dig themselves out of their hole. What happened? Number 14, Mookie Blaylock, 31.8 million. Mookie Blaylock is still talked about as one of the greatest point guards in the history of the NBA, especially when mentioning the Atlanta Hawks. After all, he won steals titles two years in a row. That's 1997 and 1998, in case anyone's checking. But his life was less smooth after retiring. Sadly, he soon slipped into a drug and alcohol addiction that ate up his wealth, which was once impressively almost $32 million. It wasn't just that he was spending loads of cash on the drugs themselves, he was also losing tons of money on legal fees. Finally, it all boiled over when he crashed his car while high. It wasn't just his car that was a loss though. Tragically, a woman lost her life in that crash, and Mookie nearly followed her. He narrowly survived, but he was sentenced to 15 years in prison and lost the last of his money he had left. His sentence was thankfully shortened. He served three years, one year suspended that cost him 1,500 hours of community service and eight years probation. So he's out of prison, but he's not totally free just yet. Hopefully, he uses this opportunity to get his life back on track. It's not always a huge life-changing problem that leads to people losing millions though. Just ask number 13, Eric Williams, 39.8 million. Eric Williams enjoyed a 12-year long NBA career, even if he did hit a bump in the road during his third season with the Boston Celtics. He was badly injured that year and never quite bounced back, even if he did get to play with a newbie called LeBron James. He might have got hurt that year, but his bank balance didn't. He retired with a whopping 39.8 million. Somehow, just 10 years later, he was homeless. We don't know exactly what happened, but there's no doubt he'd fallen behind on some ginormous bills, which he couldn't pay. The worst was when he got served with papers, showing he was $24,000 behind on his child support payments. I think we can all agree, it doesn't look great. After that, he kind of fell under the radar for a while, but there's good news. These days, it looks like he got back on his feet and paid off his debts. We don't know how he did it, but it's pretty impressive. We might not know how Eric fixed his debt problem, but we sure do know what the next player on our list did to get himself out of trouble. Number 12, Clifford Robinson, 60 million. Clifford Robinson, or should I say Uncle Cliffy, was one of the most efficient scorers the Portland Trail Blazers ever had. He was named Man of the Year in 1993 and became an All-Star the year after. He also became one of the oldest players in the game, only retiring at the age of 40. His hard work was reflected in his bank balance. He earned just over 60 million during his career. But just two years after retiring, he declared bankruptcy. It's crazy to think you could lose all that money, but his bankruptcy documents showed he only had 7.1 million in assets with an incredible 12.4 million in debt. So how did he come back from owing 5 million? Well, he opened a marijuana business in Portland that turned out to be a big earner. It was smooth sailing for him after that, although he sadly passed away in 2020. He wasn't broke at the time though, and we have to applaud that. Not everyone can bounce back from bankruptcy on their own though. Sometimes they need a little help from their friends, like the next player on our list. Number 11, Joe Smith, 61 million. Joe Smith played for an incredible 16 years, hopping across 12 different franchises in that time. Weirdly, in the end, hopping around is what ate into his $61 million fortune. See, every time he played in a new state, he'd buy a home there without selling any of the other homes he already owned. 
By 2018, he'd literally just spent all the cash he made in the NBA. Luckily, he happened to be friends with baseball player Alex Rodriguez. Rodriguez was doing a reality show at the time and got Joe involved. It was there that he set up Joe with a financial advisor, who soon had him back on his feet and got his debts cleared. Friends helping friends is a great thing to see, but the next person on our list wasn't the helpful friend. He was scamming his friends instead. Number 10. Christian Leitner, 61 million. Christian Leitner played with multiple teams, but he became an all-star during his time with the Atlanta Hawks. Despite his solid performance, he wasn't well-liked. In fact, he's the world's most hated Duke's University graduate. He proved why when he went broke in retirement. He'd made over $61 million during his career, but managed to blow it on bad business deals and poorly chosen real estate opportunities. He owed a whopping $14 million to multiple people and needed to do something fast to avoid bankruptcy. So, he got in touch with Scottie Pippen, his teammate from the 1992 Olympic team. He told Scotty that he can get him into a dream deal that would result in the purchase of the Memphis Grizzlies. He took the cash from Scotty's investment, but the group never bought the Grizzlies like they promised. And no, nobody gave Scotty's money back. Luckily, Christian didn't get away with this blatant scam. Scotty sued him for $2.5 million, and he won. So he got his money back, and Christian got his just desserts. Okay, sometimes friends might not be so helpful. But you can always find the right friend and do something like the next person on our list. Number 9. Darius Miles, 62 million. Darius Miles started playing with the big boys straight out of high school. That's pretty impressive, but unfortunately, in his fifth season, he suffered a knee injury that put him out of the game for two years. When he finally recovered, he attempted to come back, but he could never really play the same way again. So he retired at the age of 27. Despite the injury, he somehow managed to make a ton of cash during his time in the NBA. He earned just less than $62 million, but he lost it all in the traditional way, bad business and real estate deals. When he filed for bankruptcy in 2016, he had about $460,000 but owed over $1 million. It looked bad at the time, but he's doing alright now. He got together with his former teammate, Quentin Richardson, and started Knuckleheads, one of the most popular basketball podcasts out there. That's a good idea, plus a few other ventures help Darius get back on his feet. And he's not doing too badly now. It's easy to go broke when you retire and the money stops flowing in. But the next person on our list managed to go broke even before that. Number 8. Kenny Anderson, 63 million. Kenny Anderson had a 14-year long career, but he made his all-star appearance with the New Jersey Nets. He raked in almost 63.5 million over those years. But when he retired in 2006, he'd already nearly blown every cent he'd earned. Why? Well, mostly, it was totally his own fault. He had a whopping seven children with five different women and needed to pay child support for all of them. It wasn't just the kids that were taking all his cash. Every time he got divorced, there was another huge settlement to pay. He already racked up quite a few DUI arrests, each of which cost him loads of cash. Luckily for him, he managed to turn his life around and he's doing okay these days. If you want to learn more about how he got his life back, you can watch a documentary he made about it called Mr. Chips. Kenny isn't the only player who was struggling to pay his child support. The next person on our list was having so much trouble, the courts actually decided to help him out. Number 7. Glenn Rice, 68 million. Three-time All-Star Glenn Rice was one of the best scorers in the league. He played with multiple teams, including the Heat and the Hornets. But even though he peaked in the 90s, a little before the NBA salaries went wild, he somehow managed to earn over $68 million. But a few bad business decisions meant he was down on his luck a few years later. So, he petitioned for the court to lower the child support payments because he couldn't afford to live on his own, and the autograph signings and memorabilia sales weren't helping much. He must have had a pretty good argument because the court agreed, and it seemed to help because he's doing alright these days. 68 million is a huge amount of money, but we're gonna jump up a little with the next player on our list. Number 6. Larry Johnson, 83 million. Larry Johnson, or Grandmama, became a two time All Star with the Charlotte Hornets and scored an iconic four point play with the New York Knicks. 
As a fan favorite, he probably deserved to earn a whopping $83 million over his career, even if it was cut short by a bad injury that saw him retire at just 31 years old. Unfortunately, the injuries didn't just end his career, they also ate into his bank balance after forcing him to retire. The multiple expensive surgeries to keep Larry going in his everyday life weren't the only problem for his wallet. He also had multiple kids that he had to pay child support for, and you'll be shocked to hear how much it was costing him. One of his exes was owed an eye-watering $890,000 because he hadn't paid in so long. In 2015, he filed for bankruptcy. But the only way he could pay back that huge sum to the mother of his child was to give her his house in California. Luckily for him, she accepted, and his debts disappeared. We don't know what his bank balance looks like now, but we hope he's back on track. Sometimes, it's not something bad like an injury that causes a player to go broke. The next player proves you can have too much of a good thing. Number 5. Derek Coleman, 91 million. Derek Coleman started his career with the New Jersey Nets, won Rookie of the Year in 1991, and became an All Star three years later. In 2005, he decided to retire with an impressive 91 million in the bank. He couldn't lose, except in 2010, he was filing for bankruptcy. How did that happen? Well, it looks like he somehow partied all his wealth away. He was on top of the world and picked a lavish lifestyle to match, not realizing that he couldn't actually sustain it forever. So what did he do? Amazingly, he chose to go back to school. He got a degree and now helps young people at risk by introducing them to basketball as a Syracuse University ambassador. As if getting kids off the street wasn't enough good work, he's also an activist for clean water in his hometown. It's all pretty impressive. Derek chose a unique way to make a comeback, but the next person on our list is still waiting on his. Number 4. Sean Kemp, 91.5 million. Sean Kemp was the king of the highlight reel in the 90s. It's not every day a player makes six straight All Star games, after all. He also helped put Seattle on the basketball map, so you could say he deserved to earn $91.5 million over his 14 years in the NBA. His life after retirement looked pretty smooth, but actually, around 2022 is what revealed that he only had about $1 million left. So what happened to the other 90? It all comes down to legal fees and child support payments. After all, he is paying child support to six different people. It's gotta add up, right? We don't know how much cash he has now, but hopefully it's just a matter of time before he becomes a rich man again. Sean might have created his own problems, but at least he wasn't arrogant about it, unlike the next person on our list. Number 3. Latrell Spruill, 97 million. There's no doubt four time All Star Latrell Spruill was a great player. His time with the Warriors and Knicks proved his skills, but it was also peppered with problems with his attitude. NBA fans will all remember the time he choked his head coach. It would be that attitude that would cause his downfall. When the Minnesota Timberwolves offered him a $21 million contract in 2004, he turned it down because he wanted more cash. It was a huge mistake. They were the last team who would offer him a contract, and he was forced into retirement in 2005. Sure, he made $97 million by that time, which should have made him happy for the rest of his life but he'd blown it all in just three years. In 2008, his yacht was repossessed after he missed too many payments, and he fell behind on his mortgage, which meant his $1.5 million mansion went into foreclosure. There's no doubt he caused all those problems himself with his bad attitude. You can keep making the same mistakes forever like Latrell did, or you can do what the next person on our list did. Number two, Vin Baker, 97 million. Vin Baker kicked off his career with the Milwaukee Bucks, where he stood out as a talented player. But it was only when he joined Seattle in 1997 that he got to the playoffs and became a three-time All-Star in his first season with the team. By the end of his career, he'd earned over $97 million. Unfortunately, he was funding some pretty dark addictions that had started even while he was still playing. He lost all the money and was forced to make a decision. So, he started working hard to turn his life around. Luckily, he also happened to know someone that can help him out. Howard Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks, had owned the Supersonics while Vin was playing for them. He was kind enough to gift a Starbucks in Connecticut to Vin, which really helped him get back on his feet. 
Now that he's living a clean life, he's gone from the Starbucks to working as an assistant coach for his first team, the Bucks. Vin lost all his money pretty fast, but still not as fast as the last person on our list. Number 1. Antoine Walker $105 million. Three-time All-Star with the Boston Celtics, Antoine Walker quickly became known for taking any shot that he got a chance at. That and his contribution to the Miami Heat team that won a title meant he retired with a gigantic $105 million. But somehow, he went broke before he even retired. He said it was all down to a pretty bad gambling habit, plus a few run-ins with the law. Despite the fall from grace, he's actually back on track now. You can even see his face on TV and is earning enough cash from that to keep him happy. Sure, as we've just seen, a lot of NBA players go broke, but others have a unique way to hang on to their money. Want to find out which NBA players live like average Joes despite being rich? Take a look. Imagine earning millions on the basketball court, living a life of fame and fortune only to lose it all in the blink of an eye. How could some of the biggest NBA stars go from rags to riches and back to rags? Join us as we unravel the unbelievable stories of NBA legends who lost their entire fortunes. Number 8. Antoine Walker Antoine Walker's story is a classic tale of a spectacular rise followed by an equally dramatic fall. With career earnings of a staggering $108 million, Walker was once among the elite of NBA players, known for his skills on the court and his lavish lifestyle off it. However, this lifestyle, marked by excessive spending and poor financial decisions, led him to file for bankruptcy just two years after his retirement, a cautionary tale for athletes worldwide. Walker's downfall was fueled primarily by his extravagant lifestyle. He had a penchant for the finer things in life – luxury cars, opulent jewelry, and grandiose houses. But his generosity played an equally significant role in his financial demise. Walker was known for his big heart, often helping out friends and family. He believed in sharing his wealth, providing for approximately 30 people and assisting them in upgrading their lives. Unfortunately, this nobility came with a hefty price tag. His open-handedness, while admirable, turned out to be one of the crucial factors that drained his finances. Beyond personal spending, Walker's investment decisions added to his financial woes. He ventured into various businesses without adequate knowledge or advice, leading to a series of bad investments. His timing was also unfortunate, as he retired during the 2008 recession, negatively impacting his financial ventures. To compound these issues, Walker also had a history of gambling, accumulating significant debts over time. The combination of an extravagant lifestyle, a generous heart, unwise investments, and gambling debts created a perfect storm that led Walker to file for Chapter 7 bankruptcy in 2010. This fall from grace was a personal loss and a public spectacle, highlighting the financial vulnerability of even the highest earning athletes. Today, Antoine Walker has turned his narrative around and uses his experience to educate others. He now speaks to young athletes, sharing his story as a warning and offering advice on financial management. His journey from riches to rags and back to a place of influence, albeit in a different realm, serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of financial literacy, especially for those who find themselves suddenly thrust into wealth. Number 7. Larry Johnson once a prominent figure in the NBA, Larry Johnson saw his financial stability crumble under the weight of personal responsibilities and mismanagement. Garnering over $83 million throughout his illustrious career, Johnson's financial downfall is a stark reminder of athletes' complexities in managing newfound wealth, especially when personal lives intertwine with financial obligations. At the core of Johnson's financial troubles were his child support commitments. Fathering five children with four different women, Johnson was entangled in a web of substantial financial responsibilities. The cost of supporting his children and other lifestyle expenses began to chip away at his substantial earnings. As these obligations mounted, Johnson's financial reservoirs started to deplete, pushing him toward a state of bankruptcy by 2015. 
This situation underscores the importance of financial planning and the challenge of managing personal responsibilities, particularly for high-profile athletes. Despite these overwhelming challenges, Johnson's story is not just one of loss, but also of recovery and adaptation. After declaring bankruptcy, he took a significant step towards rebuilding his life by transitioning into a new role. Johnson now works as a business operations representative for the New York Knicks. While different from his days on the court, this role allows him to remain connected to the sport he loves, leveraging his experience and knowledge in a different capacity. His shift from an NBA star to a business professional highlight the potential for athletes to reinvent themselves after their playing days are over. Johnson's journey from financial ruin to a stable role with the Knicks is a testament to resilience and adaptability. It's a compelling narrative that details the pitfalls of financial mismanagement and showcases the possibilities of starting anew. His story is a cautionary tale to current and aspiring athletes about the importance of prudent financial planning and the reality that earnings, no matter how large, can quickly dissipate without careful management. Moreover, Johnson's transition into a business role illustrates the importance of life after sports, emphasizing that an athlete's career is not only defined by their performance on the field or court, but also by how they navigate life's challenges and opportunities off it. Number 6. Eric Strickland Eric Strickland's journey in the NBA is a unique story of trust, mismanagement, and financial loss. Despite not being as widely recognized as some of his contemporaries, Strickland carved out a respectable career in the league, earning around $13 million. However, his financial downfall is a cautionary tale about the perils of misplaced trust in financial management, especially when it involves family members. Strickland's major financial misstep was entrusting his finances to his father. This decision, rooted in trust and familial loyalty, unfortunately led to a series of ill-advised investments. The most notable of these was the purchase of a plot of land. Strickland's father was convinced to buy this land for $1.8 million, a decision based on a fraudulent appraisal that valued the land at $3 million. This investment was made on the advice of a friend of a friend, a classic red flag in investment circles. The land, as it turned out, was worth far less than the price paid, leading to a significant financial loss for Strickland. This incident underscores the importance of professional financial advice and investment due diligence. The reliance on informal advice and lack of proper valuation led to a catastrophic financial decision. It's a stark reminder that even in finance matters, where trust is paramount, seeking expertise and independent verification is crucial particularly when large sums are involved. The consequences for Strickland were severe. The loss from this bad investment and other misguided decisions by his family led to his bankruptcy. This financial collapse was a monetary loss and a personal blow for an undrafted player who had worked hard to make a name for himself in the NBA. Eric Strickland's story is a powerful lesson in financial management for athletes and individuals alike. It highlights the risks of uninformed investing and the importance of involving financial professionals in managing large earnings. This narrative also serves as a reminder that while family members may have good intentions, financial management requires expertise beyond good faith and trust. Ultimately, Strickland's experience is a cautionary tale about the importance of informed financial decision-making and the potential pitfalls of entrusting one's financial future to unqualified hands, no matter how well-intentioned they may be. Number 5. Latrell Sprewell Latrell Sprewell's story in the NBA is one of remarkable talent shadowed by a series of poor decisions and financial mismanagement. Having earned nearly $100 million over his career, Sprewell's journey from affluence to financial distress is a sobering tale of how quickly fortune can turn when mishandled. A pivotal moment in Sprewell's financial downfall was his decision to turn down a $21 million contract from the Minnesota Timberwolves. This decision, made in the belief that he was worth more, would later haunt him as he failed to secure any significant offers thereafter. Sprewell's rejection of this substantial contract is often cited as a classic example of overestimating worth and opportunity, leading to a significant loss of potential earnings. 
Beyond this critical error in judgment, Screwell's financial woes were compounded by a series of legal issues and poor financial management. His lifestyle, marked by lavish spending, was not sustainable, especially without the steady income of an active NBA player. The financial strain led to a series of repercussions, including losing his home and accumulating tax debts. In 2007, Sprewell's financial situation reached a public nadir when his yacht was repossessed, and he defaulted on his mortgage payments, leading to the loss of his homes. These incidents indicate a broader pattern of mismanagement and lack of financial planning. Like many athletes who come into sudden wealth, Sprewell seemed unprepared for the realities of financial management and the long-term implications of his spending and career decisions. His situation is a stark reminder of the importance of financial literacy, particularly for individuals whose careers can be relatively short-lived and whose earnings are public and substantial. The Trell Sprewell story is not just about financial ruin, but also about missed opportunities and the importance of prudent decision-making. It's a cautionary tale to current and future athletes about the perils of overconfidence in one's market value and the critical need for responsible financial management. His fall from a position of considerable wealth to facing financial distress illustrates the rapidity with which fortunes can change and the lasting consequences of financial missteps. Number 4. Derek Coleman Derek Coleman's journey through financial hardship is a tale of not recklessness but well-intentioned investments that unfortunately went awry. Having earned an impressive $87 million during his NBA career, Coleman's downfall was not due to extravagant spending or personal vices, but rather his investments in the struggling city of Detroit, which ultimately failed to yield expected returns, especially during the challenging times of the 2008 recession. Coleman's investments were driven by a desire to revitalize his hometown of Detroit. In the late 90s and early 2000s, Detroit was experiencing significant economic decline. Coleman, moved by a sense of responsibility and a vision for rejuvenation, invested heavily in real estate and development projects across the city. These ventures included investments in Hilton hotels and fast food chains, part of a broader strategy to create jobs and stimulate economic growth. However, the timing of these investments coincided with the 2008 economic recession, a period marked by a severe downturn in the real estate market and overall economic instability. The recession hit Detroit particularly hard, exacerbating the already challenging conditions and drastically devaluating Coleman's investments. His lawyer, Mark Burke, remarked on Coleman's focus on revitalizing Detroit but acknowledged the unsustainable nature of these investments given the state of the economy. The financial losses from these failed investments were substantial, significantly reducing Coleman's wealth. His story is a poignant example of how external economic factors can play a critical role in personal financial stability, especially when investments are concentrated in one area or sector. Derek Coleman's experience is a reminder that even investments made with the best intentions and community spirit can be vulnerable to broader economic forces. It highlights the importance of diversification in financial planning and the risks inherent in tying one's financial future to the fortunes of a single city or industry. Today, the Coleman's life is far from the luxurious lifestyle often associated with NBA stars. He resides in Detroit, living a modest life but remaining content with the lessons he learned from his financial journey. His story, while less dramatic than some of his peers, offers valuable insights into the complexities of investment, the impact of economic cycles, and the importance of strategic financial planning. Number 3. Dennis Rodman Dennis Rodman's financial descent is a classic tale of a sports star's earnings dissipating under the dual pressures of a high-flying lifestyle and unfortunate financial scams. Known for his flamboyant personality both on and off the court, Rodman earned about 27 mil during his NBA career, a fortune that dwindled due to a series of poor financial choices and external deceptions. 
Central to Rodman's financial collapse was his notoriously lavish lifestyle. Known for extravagant spending on parties and luxury goods, Rodman embodied the stereotype of a sports celebrity living life to the fullest without regard for financial consequences. This lifestyle was costly and unsustainable, especially after his lucrative basketball career ended. Adding to his financial woes were substantial child support payments. With multiple children to support, Rodman was under significant financial strain, a common issue among athletes who find their personal lives entangled with their financial responsibilities. However, perhaps the most damaging blow to Rodman's finances was being victimized in a financial scam. Peggy Fulford, a close friend and self-proclaimed financial advisor, gained control of Rodman's bank account as part of a larger scam involving several athletes and celebrities. Under the guise of managing their wealth, Fulford was actually running a sophisticated operation, laundering millions through fake shell companies. Rodman, among others, fell prey to this scam, resulting in substantial financial losses. Rodman's financial downfall vividly illustrates the myriad ways wealth can evaporate. It's not just through personal extravagances or familial obligations, but also through vulnerability to financial scams, especially when trust is placed in unverified hands. His story underscores the importance of thorough vetting and oversight when it comes to financial management, even or perhaps especially when dealing with close acquaintances. Today, Dennis Rodman's life is far from his heyday in the NBA. His experience is a cautionary tale about the perils of unchecked spending, the importance of responsible financial management, and the need to be vigilant against financial fraud. It highlights the necessity for athletes who often come into sudden wealth to be educated and cautious about their financial decisions, ensuring their earnings are protected and managed wisely. Number 2. Scottie Pippen Scottie Pippen, one of the most renowned names in NBA history, encountered a series of financial setbacks despite his substantial career earnings. His journey from basketball fame to financial infamy is marked by a string of poor investment decisions and legal entanglements, illustrating the pitfalls of inadequate financial management. A significant blunder in Pippen's financial history was the purchase of a $4 million private jet. In a move that can only be described as a costly oversight, Pippin failed to conduct a thorough inspection before the purchase, discovering later that the jet was non-functional. This mishap resulted in a massive financial loss and highlighted the importance of due diligence in substantial investments. Real estate investments further compounded Pippin's financial difficulties. Like many high-earning individuals, Pippin ventured into the real estate market, hoping to multiply his wealth. However, these investments did not pan out as expected, leading to substantial losses. These real estate setbacks were a harsh lesson in the volatile nature of property investments and the need for strategic planning and market analysis. The most telling episode in Pippin's financial narrative was his lawsuit against his former management firm. Pippin accused the firm of giving him bad advice, which he claimed led to his financial downfalls. This legal battle underscores a critical aspect of wealth management, the reliance on financial advisors, and the consequences of misguided counsel. While it's unclear how much Pippin recovered through this lawsuit, the ordeal indicates the complexities and challenges athletes face in managing their earnings effectively. Scotty Pippin's financial decline is a multifaceted story of misjudgments, missed opportunities, and the perils of trusting without verifying. It serves as a cautionary tale for athletes and other high earners about the importance of being actively involved in their financial affairs, understanding their investments, and ensuring they have competent and trustworthy financial advisors. In sum, Pippin's financial journey, marked by its highs and lows, is a powerful reminder of the need for sound financial decision-making. It highlights that even those who have attained great wealth are not immune to financial misfortune, especially when their decisions are not underpinned by careful consideration and expert advice. Number 1. Allen Iverson Allen Iverson's financial journey is a compelling story of a meteoric rise to wealth and a subsequent fall due to extravagant spending and mismanagement. 
Despite earning an estimated $250 million during his illustrious NBA career, Iverson encountered significant financial difficulties, painting a picture of the challenges athletes can face in managing their wealth. Central to Iverson's financial troubles were his extravagant spending habits. Known for his flamboyant lifestyle, Iverson spent lavishly on jewelry, cars, and homes. His penchant for luxury was not confined to his personal use. He was also known for generously spending on his large entourage. This level of spending, while sustainable during his high-earning days in the NBA, became untenable once his regular income from basketball ceased. A key aspect of Iverson's financial decline was his distrust in banks, which led to poor financial management. His reluctance to utilize traditional banking services meant that he often kept large sums of cash at hand, making it difficult to track and manage his wealth effectively. This approach to handling his finances opened doors to mismanagement and potential loss. Further complicating Iverson's financial situation were his legal troubles. Legal issues can be a significant financial drain. This was no different for Iverson. The costs associated with legal representation and settlements further depleted his wealth. Despite these challenges, Iverson's story is not solely one of loss. He has a lifeline in the form of a unique deal with Reebok. This deal provides him with an annual payment of $800,000, offering some financial stability in the midst of his monetary troubles. This ongoing income is a rare form of financial security that most athletes do not possess once their playing days are over. Allen Iverson's story illustrates how even the wealthiest athletes can face financial peril due to mismanagement and poor planning. His experiences underscore the importance of financial literacy and the necessity for athletes to have a solid plan for their wealth, both during and after their careers. While Iverson's situation may seem extreme, it serves as a valuable lesson in the importance of prudent financial management, reminding us that substantial earnings alone do not guarantee financial security. From extravagant spending to poor investments, these athletes' experiences remind us that financial security is not solely about earning but also about managing wealth wisely. Their stories, marked by both fame and hardship, serve as a powerful lesson for us all, emphasizing that financial stability requires careful planning, sound advice, and a thoughtful approach to spending. As we reflect on these narratives, let's remember that financial well-being is a continuous journey, not just a destination.